Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to show you my 10 favorite books of 2022. Uh, I didn't read so many books last year. I read, if I'm not mistaken, 24. So to get 10 favorites out of that, it's a little bit, you know, it's half. So it was, and it was my last readings of December, like last minute to thir the 31st, that I did some readings that got into this list. So that was good. But without further ado, let's get into the list. So in 10th place, I'm, I have The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. So this is a gothic book. This passes in Paris in the opera house and we have a group of characters, one that is a singer in the opera and then a boy or a young man that is in love with that singer and then we have a mysterious character that is called the Phantom of the Opera that we realize that he has a relationship with that singer. How was she called? I don't remember the names of the characters right now, but I have a video of this video of I have a video of this book uh, uploaded already, so you can go to the link that and I'm going to leave in the cards and I'm going to link the video down below in the description so you can go check it out. I talk there with more depth about it and it was a reading that I enjoyed. I, I didn't... well, before I came to this reading I had seen uh, the Phantom of the Opera f movie of 2004. I was with certain expectations and the story of the book is very different. Not so different, but in some aspects the movie made it like the ending is very different from the book. So I was with some certain expectations for the book and they weren't met. So I wasn't disappointed, that's not what I'm saying, but at the same time I was expecting other thing. Or, or another ending, you know, but that's okay. So, number 10, Phantom of the Opera. Oh, I didn't say anything at the beginning of the video, but what do you think about this new location? So, this is our, these are my bookshelves. It's just one, one bookshelf, but I was wondering I was I always did my videos uh, here um, on the floor behind the couch uh, because that were that was near a window and I don't have lights so I'm really at the mercy of sunlight so uh, that's why I always did my videos there but. I was thinking to, you know, as I talk about books and I know at least I speak to, from my point of view, I enjoy seeing bookshelves behind the people that I usually uh, watch. So I was wondering to do the same and do my videos um, in front of my bookshelf so you can have a more ambience. And, you know, be a, a bit more um, cute. <laughs> what do you think? Do you enjoy this perspective? 
or you don't care let me know so continuing in number nine i have solaris by stanislaw lamb this is a science fiction book and this is a book where we have our main character that is a man i don't remember the names right now so don't ask me i also have a video about this book that i have uploaded in my channel so our main character is a man and he is on a, a spaceship going to a planet um, a planet that is being studied by humans and when he gets there he, he was supposed to be received by three other people three other men that they were scientists there uh, in in that planet studying the um, that planet right and that doesn't happen he receives the news that one of them has died and that man was his friend and short after he begins to realize that something strange is happening in that planet and he starts to receive visitations from someone that he knew but the thing is that person is dead so or was supposed to be so after that we have the development of the conversations between our main character and this vi visitator his relationship with the other two men that are left in the in the building and then we have uh, like um, introspective ending it's like you feel a bit empty at the end but it's really beautiful so many thoughts will come to your mind reading this book it's very introspective as i was saying and you will dwell in the memories of this character and think about your own life so i love this book it was uh, an experience very oh and it's very you want to know what's going to happen so you read this book really fast so it's a grabbing read read so so I, I i went to my pc and go to my goodreads page and i read 26 books last year so that wasn't so many but that was the books that i could read but so yeah I really advise you to check this one out it's really fun to read you will be very involved in the story and very intrigued by what is happening and you will want to know the the clothes like the the ending you want to know what's going to happen and it's a bittersweet the ending but i think it was perfect to the development of this book then in number eight i have dance macabre or dance macabre by stephen king so this is my second book that i read from stephen king another non-fiction because this is a non-fiction book uh, the first one that I read was on writing and I love that one it was if not my let me see yeah so on writing was my top my number one favorite book from 2021 I love that one and it was my first reading of Stephen King and this was my second one another non-fiction so dance macabre is a book about the horror genre this was written in 1980 and published in 1981 
So it's an oldie, but a good one. And the premise of this book was to talk about the horror genre, about liter literature, movies, radio shows and TV shows from the, uh, um, the last 30 years from uh, to the point of 1980, right? So the previous 30 years. And Stephen King, this was a proposal that was made to Stephen King by an editor he, that was his friend and he accepted. So by then he already had written Carrie, The Stand, I think. So he, he had written some of his uh, bestsellers. This is like... Um, in the beginning, in the first part of this book, we have Stephen King talking about a, a bit about his personal life, like how he was introduced to the horror genre, his experience going to the cinema with his friends, his experience of his mom and his family telling them uh, horror stories or stories that were a bit bizarre, radio shows that he used to, uh, to listen when he was a kid that were about horror with actors impersonating characters and that feeling of being fearful was so wonderful to him so he was thrilled uh, by feeling that sensation um, and then we have a chapter where he talks about uh, some m three or four major literature books so books <laughs> uh, i think frankenstein the turn of the screw dracula and dr jekyll and mr hyde so he talks with some depth about those books and he, he does some comments uh, about the plot of those books so he a thing that i said oh uh, i'm sorry i'm all over the place but i have a video posted in my channel about this book in particular so this came out uh, during my horror month during october what was not exactly in October, I explained in the video, so go watch it. But if you're interested to know a bit more in depth about this book, go check it out that video. It's really, I loved doing that video, so please, please go and watch it. Uh, and if you like Stephen King, if you like the horror genre, I think you'll be very interested to read or to watch that video and then read this book. So I'm not going to elongate too much. I think you have my point. So then he talks about radio shows, movies, directors, everything related to the horror genre. The only thing was that through the ending, so the last part of this book, he was talking about references of shows that are too old for my generation and I didn't watch any of those. I, I knew them because I heard talking about those uh, specific shows, but not because that I watched them or anything. So through the ending, I was a bit lost and a bit bored, but at the same time, it gave me a curiosity to go and research for those specific shows. So, yeah, really great and I really advise you to read this one and I'm really curious to read the fiction of Stephen King. I talk about that in my video and I talk about the project that I have for reading Stephen King. So, yeah, please go watch that video. Dance Macabre. So, this is number 8. In number seven, we have the New York Trilogy by Paul Auster. So this one, we have uh, three stories, 
so it's like there are three separate books in one city of glass ghosts and the locked room and they are all in some type of way a detective story so we have here people that are passing to being a detective people that are a detective by profession and people that become detective because of circumstances that happen that in some kind of way oblige them to become a detective and I loved this book and uh, this was very intriguing to me because I didn't go to this reading with any expectations I didn't know anything about this book so I was blind and it was wonderful so <laughs> the thing is with this book every single story ends with an open ending so as you can puzzle by now if this is a detective story you want to figure out what is happening right and at the end of the thing you don't have closure so it stays like to your imagination you figure out how this ends or why this happens or you know so I also have a video about this book in my channel so please go watch it if you were intrigued I talk a bit more about the plot of each book or each story so please go check it out then in number six we have Anna Karnina by Leo Tolstoy so I have a love and hate relationship with this book the funny thing is I also did a video about this book in my channel so if you're interested go watch it I link I will link everything down below so to be succinct this follows two main characters Levin and Anna so is the title Anna Karnina so Anna is the sister of Oblomov and Oblov, Oblomov is passing through difficulties in his marriage and the wife is threatening with divorce and Oblomov asks Anna to come to his house and save his marriage basically and then we have Levin that is a friend of uh, Oblomov Oblom Oblomov no no Oblomov is um, a book nothing to do with Anna Karnina Oblonsky I'm sorry um, and he, Levin is friend of Oblonsky and he's uh, a proprietor of lands and he's interested in the sister of the wife of Oblonsky okay do you catch so we follow these families we follow the crisis of the marriage of Oblonsky at the beginning of the story then we follow the um, story of Levin and how he uh, she's or not the heart of Kitty and then we follow the story of Anna because she's married she lives in St. Petersburg with a husband that is a bit older than her and they have a son and she will f fall in love she will fall in love with Vronsky and Vronsky is like a pretendant of Kitty so very confusing right so this is a book that in that particular point is wonderful because you have many relations between the characters and they are all connected and they all have something to do with each other so very entertaining in that in that way 
we follow these storylines at the same time or uh, it appears to be at the same time that, but that's another thing uh, that I mention in my video but I have a bittersweet relationship with this book because I love the parts where we would, we will follow we would follow Levin I loved Levin but when it cuts the narrative and it begins talking about secondary characters or dialogues with characters that I was not interested in it become a bit boring and I was like delaying my reading so I took like six months to read Anna Karnina uh, and it was a bit tough for me because I had to stop so many times because I simply was bored but when it, uh, we arrived to Levin again wonderful so the parts of Anna I have to say is not that I didn't enjoy them I did but they weren't my favorite but another thing is that some time now has passed since I finished this reading and I got I kept I catch myself thinking about this book and it's intriguing to me why this is happening and and the more time passes the more I think that I enjoyed this book so that's why I put it in number six because it go it went up in my enjoyment and my admiration for this book because something that I have to say I really enjoyed how Tolstoy wrote this book it's very subtle and nothing is explicit everything is like I don't even even know the adjective that I should use but it's very subtle I think that the better word that I can find so yeah please go watch the video to see my comments and a bit more about the story and I there in my video I talk about some support books that I read that were about Anna Karnina that I think you will enjoy uh, hearing about so please go watch it then in number five I have a short story by Edgar Allan Poe The Black Cat so it's not a book but it's a short story and everything counts right and I have a video also about this short story it was for my horror month so this was during the month of October I think if I'm not mistaken this was my first video for that project um, and I love this short story it was my first reading of Edgar Allan Poe uh, and this is about a man who has a cat and he one day I, I'm just going to say this he rips off the eye of the cat or the cat's eye so that's the beginning of the short story and more happens okay so so for you to have an idea and I loved it it was a really fast reading it's really few pages but it's so impactful and at the end it's so ironic what happens <laughs> it's so funny it's supposed to be horror but it's more comical than anything so the the irony and the the acidity how which with um, Edgar Allan Poe wrote it's so fun to read wonderful so I highly advise you to go check this sh short story out and if you don't mind spoilers or if you have read the, the short story 
and you want to see my comments about it, please go see that video because that video is with spoilers. I warn you at the beginning of the video in my introduction. So be aware of that. But if you look, go and read this short story. It's really few pages. It's really, really short. So you will not pass so many time reading this one and go watch that video. Okay. Then in number four, we have Dangerous Liaisons by Shor de Lo de la Cruz or Shor de Lo de la Clou. I don't know how well to pronounce it. So this is um, letters. So this is a, an epistolary novel. Uh, so it's a bit confusing at the beginning, which is who or who is who. Uh, I have already seen the 1994, I think, movie with, um, with who? G uh, Gwen Close or Glenn Close, John Malkovich and, oh, this actress. What is her name? Oh my God, I love her so much. So you know who I'm talking about. So I have already seen that movie. So I was really intrigued and really curious to read the book. And I loved it. You know, the uh, epistolary books are not my thing so much. But I have to say that in this particular situation, it worked. But maybe it worked because I had the um, memories of the movie. And it was more easy for me to place, oh, this person is this character and this one is this. And, you know, so, um, and I had the expressions, the attitudes, the behaviors of the, of the actors in that movie and I was transplanting, is that a word, through to the book as I was reading. But basically this is a story about Vicon de Valmont and Mar the Marquise de Mertil. They are rich people. This is passing in the 17 or 1800s or 1700s they are rich they are friends or at the beginning of the story they are friends and they want to corrupt people so they have fun because they are like promiscuous and very sexual people and they want to corrupt well behaved and feared of God people. So yeah, that's the main plot. I have a video about this book as well. So if you want to know more about the plot, please go watch it. I really advise you, you do so because it's really, really fun and you will be very curious to know more and read this one and yeah, I love this one and I really advise you to go check the movie. It's brilliant. John Malkovich for me in that it's my favorite movie of his. I think he's the perf perfection because the way that he portrays that character is so believable and so, I don't know, faithful to the... Um, to the interior, to the character, to how do you say it? It's the same word, but I, I meant to the soul of that character, you know? So brilliant. I love those these three actors. I think they are perfect for the roles they are in. But John Malkovich has a special place in my heart. Okay, now in third, 
we have Marie Antoinette by Stefan Zweig. So this is a biography. I think I can say this is the first biography that I read in my life. Right? I think it is. And it was wonderful. I had um, already seen so many people talking about this book. And um, commenting, co uh, making comments, like positive comments about this reading. And I have to say that I loved it. I One thing that made me a bit sad, uh, but not about the book in itself or the way that it was written, but about this particular Portuguese edition, is that I um, found out that some chapters were missing in my edition, in this edition. And uh, because I was accompanying a joint reading with a Brazilian booktuber, and he made a schedule for us to follow, and he had chapters there that I went to find in my book and I didn't find them. And I asked if, uh, for, if they could take pictures of the, those particular chapters and send me so I could figure out if it was in a different name or what it was. And then I, I realized that it, it wasn't titled in a different, with a different title. It was really missing from my book. And I emailed the, uh, the publisher and they answered me like, this was an old translation from, I don't know which year, but some, very old like the 70s or something and they asked permission to the because the, the translator has already died and passed away and they asked permission to the uh, maybe grandchildren I, I'm not sure now to use that, that translation but the person that was talking to me was saying that they didn't know from which edition the translator did her translation. So if it, if it was from the original, if it was from another translation. So that was a bit weird to me how this could be, how a publisher could not know those type of information and how they could publish or republish a book like and not make research or not verify if the book was whole in integral with the integral text so i was a bit you know okay i paid for this and now i don't know what it's inside and maybe maybe no i'm sure it's not all in so that was a bit frustrating, but, and for you to know if some Portuguese um, viewers are seeing this, you have to know that the chapters that are missing, uh, they have crucial information. And a thing that I thought it was because this book was uh, or the translation was so old, maybe it was censored because the things that, at least one chapter, the things that they, Stefan Zweig talks about in there are a bit sexual and so maybe they were censored but, you know, for the publisher to not verify this is unbelievable. I mean, really but okay beyond that it was a wonderful reading i have a video also about this no i don't 
Oh my god! <laughs> I don't have a video about this one, right? Okay, but I have an explanation. So I don't have a video about this one because my um, idea was to make a joint video of this book of Stefan Zweig and the book from about Marie Antoinette f by uh, Antoni Frazier because that was the, the book that inspired the movie of Marie Antoinette that came out in 2000 and something it was with so the movie was from two, 2006 and Kristen Dunst may uh, portray Marie Antoinette I had already seen that movie but it was so many years ago that I don't remember so well but I knew that the, the book that inspired that movie was from Antonia Frazier so I'm really curious to read her book first and then watch the movie and then make a video, a joint, like a joint review from this book and that one, okay? So wait for me, <laughs> okay. In number two, cha -cha -cha -cha, we have What I Talk About When I Talk About Running by Aruki Murakami. Uh, this was from my 12 books for 12 months uh, challenge uh, for 2022. And I, I don't remember in which month this was, I think July or something, but I just read it in December, so you to know uh, how that is going. Um, and I, I love this one. This is a non-fiction, this is a memoirs book. And this, as the title implies, is Murakami talking about basically why he loves running and what running uh, did to his life and how ch he, it changed his life. And, but this much more about, uh, is about much more. So he talks about the first book he, he wrote, how it came to his mind, uh, not the idea in itself, because he doesn't talk too much about his first, I think, two books, that he even doesn't permit them to be published anymore. So, but he talks about the, his life when he was a young man, how he met his wife, uh, how um, the first job that he did when he came out of university. And for you to have an idea, he only begins running when he was 30 years old. And he only uh, thought about writing a book when he was 30 years old. So I'm 30 and reading this book, I'm like, everything is possible, no matter your age. If you put something in your mind that you want to do, and if you go and push yourself and with motivation and persistence and I don't know, strength of will of power, you will achieve that. And it's wonder it's brilliant. This book is like so motivational, so inspiring. It's wonderful the relation that that he has with this sport and how it maintains him sane. I have to speak from myself. I'm not a, a runner and I don't want to be a runner because I hate running so I couldn't identify with him when he was talking about running but that doesn't matter because you can translate that to your life in other aspects, right? So this is wonderful and it, it, it was like this I didn't put this one in number one this year because I love this one. This was between this one and my number one 
I was really indecisive. But I have a video about this book, so if you want to know with more depth of what Murakami talks about in here, please go watch it. I think you will be mesmerized and will, you will want to run to buy this book and read it. And so, in number one, do you guess it? Did you? I think it's not so much a, a surprise, I suppose, at least for some, you may have guessed it. And that is The Book of Disquiet by Fernando Pessoa. So this is a Portuguese author. And of course, he, a bit of patriotism came to hand and I put this one in number one. Not only because of that, okay? This book has, has very, very merit. Uh, and this is like... So, Fernando Pessoa is known to be a poet, but he has some um, prose uh, works and the Book of Disquiet is one of them. And Fernando Pessoa was known also to have many heteronyms. And for this one, he, the, well, there are many um, theories. So, the people that study Fernando Pessoa have different opinions about it. Some say that a part of this is wrote as Fernando Pessoa and another part is wrote as Bernard Soares. Uh, but this is like glimpse of um, thoughts, lost thoughts. So he talks about his work, the people at his job. He talks about why he has no friends, when he goes to the cafe. Uh, when he goes and um, walks on the street, uh, thoughts that he has about some subjects. So, um, as you can see, at least in this edition that I have here, this is a, a Portuguese edition. If you can see here, it has it like for, it's like it is in topics. So you can. As I say in the video that I did about this book in particular, I also have a video about this book. Um, you can open this book wherever and it, it will make sense because this book doesn't make sense, <laughs> you know? It's like you don't have a plot, you don't have a sequence of events, you don't have there is nothing like that. It's so different from everything that I have read in my life. And it's this is a literary experience to have. It, you should read this book at least one time in your life, I think. And you can quote this book in so many times, so many times, because this book is quotable almost in every topic that it, it, it does. So, it's wonderful. So, if you want to know more about it, please go check the video. It's really short, so you don't be dwelling in the video if you don't like longer videos, as I usually do. I think it's like 16 minutes or something, so please go watch it. I have some curiosities there that I talk about, and I love this one. And it's a way for you to know a Portuguese author, I think Fernando Pessoa is a very special author and one of my projects is to read all his work. I have here in my house a compilation of poems that I have read some years ago, not in to um, total, but some poems here and there, but I have a project to read everything from, from him so let's see how that goes but I don't know how I'm going to review poems so 
I'm thinking about how to do that. But talking about this one in specific, I think this is an experience that you will not have in any other book in your life. So this is really, really special. And it's not, I can't say it's so easy to read. That's not what I'm saying, but it's worth it. So give this one a chance. And yeah, this is my list. These were my 10 favorite books of 2022. Please let me know which one were your favorites. I would love to hear some titles so I can add to my TBR and research new authors, new titles. So please let me know all about it. I hope you have enjoyed it. And now I'm going to say goodbye. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot to the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And that's it! I see you on the next one! Bye!